Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dutsy Gaming and a new video on the channel. Is picking a league starter league after league something that stresses you out or confuses you? Are you constantly worried that you'll pick a bad build or a build that doesn't meet your goals and expectations? If you're one of those people, then sit back and relax as we talk about how to find your perfect league starter. Now what a league start build is or should be has changed a lot over the last few years and it's now fairly subjective. One player may view a league starter as a build that can clear the entire atlas, picking up all four void stones and completing all the invitations. Another player, however, may only be interested in completing their map bonuses and collecting the first two void stones, allowing them to essentially farm T16 maps on their league start build and start collecting some currency. The first thing you need to decide before you even look at builds is to set yourself a goal for league start in regards to what you want your build to be capable of doing in the early throngs of the league and how much currency, if any, you expect to have to invest into the build to meet these goals. There are a few more things to go through before you even start looking for a league start build. Next, we're going to talk about how much you plan to play and how quickly you envisage it taking to get to mid-tier yellow mats. The reason this point of the game is really important is that nearly all builds can get to this stage on little to no investment, and it's often the breaking point of a lot of builds pushing into red maps where they hit that first wall and need the first chunk of investment. Now when you hit this milestone, greatly affects how much it's going to cost you to get the build going. The later you reach this goal, the cheaper things such as rare items, mid-rarity units, corrupted six links and tabulas are going to become. However, if your build requires a T1 unique or a really rare jewel or synthesized item, these tend to go up and up as the league goes on. Take Onslaught on Hit Ring for an example. I knew I wanted one at some point in my build, so I purchased one early because I know historically they go up and up in value. I purchased one in the first few days of the league as soon as I had 6 divines, and by the end of the week they'd gone up to 15 to 20 divines. It's very important to know how the economy might affect you being able to progress your build. So don't pick a build that revolves around a really specific rare unique if that build is likely to be very popular, as these items are only going to increase in price as more people get to the point of being able to afford that item. Alongside this, be honest with yourself about how much currency you're able to earn in the first few days of the league. If you know from history that you're going to make 1-2 to two divines at best, don't pick a build that's likely to cost 5 or more divines to complete the goals that you've set. I'm going to bring a video out about how to earn currency without reaching the endgame, to help people out if you're one of those players that feels it's really difficult to earn currency at league start. The last two things I consider when picking a league star, and for me they're most important too. Firstly, do you want to have the most fun and enjoyment out of your league starter, or are you happy plowing through the game for a couple of days, maybe a week, on a build that's not enjoyable to you, if that enables you to earn currency and complete all the goals that you've set? Let's say hypothetically that ball lightning totems are a cheap and easy league starter to get your goals achieved, but you could not think of anything worse than playing a totem build, then is this build right for you? Playing a build you dislike for up to a week could just turn you off the game and league entirely, and at which point was it even worth it? League start to many is the most fun part of the game. Testing out new league mechanics, farming currency in a fresh economy, these are the things that most PoE players live for. Playing a build that makes this feel like a chore just sucks all the enjoyment out of the most fun part of the league. Look at whether there's a more fun build for you personally that you could pick that can still meet the same goals, but maybe it's not quite as cheap, or maybe it doesn't get you there as fast as the meta totem build. Lastly, do you plan to play just one character the entire league, or is your league start build something you only want to play for the first week, before maybe making another character that's very difficult to do as a league starter? If you only want to play one character and plan to play for a fair portion of the league's life, then you don't really need to worry about your build being league start viable, as long as you know that with time it can achieve everything you want to in the game. You now have your league start checklist ready and you can start either looking for a build or planning out your own build. So let's recap. Number one, set out your league start goals and be realistic. Number two, understand how much you plan to play at league start and what sort of stage the economy might be at in regard to any items that you need to purchase to progress the build. Three, are you playing like a machine, ignoring fun, or do you want to play a character you will enjoy that suits your playstyle? Four, how much currency are you normally able to make at league start, and will that allow you to get your league start build up and running comfortably? Don't fool yourself about this one, be honest, 
If you can only make one divine, be honest with yourself. That's what you're going to come out of the league start with. And five, is this your only character? And does it matter if it takes you over a week to get your character able to be Uber Elder and Maven and collect your last two Void Stones? Before we go on about how to pick your build and the do's and don'ts of picking a league starter, I want to start out by busting a couple of common myths or misconceptions in the game. Now the first one which gets thrown around all the time and is just flat out incorrect is people always say that you have to rush through the campaign and no life the game for days to make good currency as if it takes you too long to get to red maps you can't make good money. Now I will say that historically this is probably true to an extent but since the introduction of the atlas tree along with key passives such as stream of consciousness and being able to block mechanics you can now comfortably farm any map mechanic you want in yellow tier maps you just beeline for those nodes, take all of the relevant nodes, and then you just farm the tier of content you're comfortable with. The difference for the majority of the mechanics between yellow and red maps is not a huge amount, so it is easy to farm currency in mid-tier maps. But this will always be relevant and true. It just might be that different mechanics yield different incomes depending on the state of the game. There are always lead mechanics that are profitable regardless of map tier. Now, yes, you will earn slightly less than people farming T14 maps, as you miss out on getting things like invitations and altars, but you can still make hundreds of chaos an hour in yellow maps if you need a bit of currency to boost your build. I'm not going to spend too long on this as I feel it's a topic that warrants an entire video. But let's talk about some very profitable things in 320 that you could do in yellow maps and in some cases white maps. Now the first one which everyone knows about is essences. They don't really change whether you're in white or red maps and there's something you can pick up early in your atlas tree and get all of the nodes with only completing up to early yellow mats. So let's just pull out Shrieking Essences of Dread from POE Ninja. If we just take day five as a price point, you can see that these sold for eight chaos each. And when you've got the essence nodes, every time you find one, it gets duplicated and you get two. So that's 16 chaos for essentially finding one essence in your map. If we check the divine price at the same time, it was 150 chaos for a divine orb. This means finding just one of these essences in your map gets you over one tenth of a divine orb and nearly all essences are worth money throughout the league. And the more you have, the more you can charge because people want to buy in bulk. Just running lower tier maps in their basic white state, you can farm an absolute ton of currency, just recycling the maps that you're never gonna run, like lower tier maps you're not gonna revisit, or bad layout maps. There's many more examples such as expedition currency and syndicate vowed items that you can make currency on. Syndicate, for example, you can sell items before unveiling them on trade and they'll sell, especially things like Elrion rings with a prefix or Gravisius chests with a prefix because people want to unveil specific mods to get their build going. Now I'm not going to go too much more into it as these mechanics change league after league and I want this video uh, to be relevant for as long as it can be, but there's always money to be made in yellow mats. Now a lot of you will want me to mention Heist as this is insanely lucrative early on, but as it takes you out of mapping and the lead mechanic, I've not covered it off. But there are a lot of good guides out there for you want to be heisters. The second thing that I think people take as gospel is that if a build cannot clear the atlas on a budget or a handful of divines, then it's not league start viable. Now the overall statement is probably true, but again we go back to goals and expectations. If you only want to play one character in the league and you want it to be a funky off meta build, that you know will take investment that does not automatically make it not league start viable. As mentioned in point one about essences, you can farm pretty much infinite currency in yellow maps. And I know several people this league and last league who farmed tens of divines in white and yellow maps to get their build pumping. This also allowed them time for boss drops to become more available on the market if their build needed something specific from Uber, Elder or Maven as an example. So yes, as a general aim, you do want your league starter to be fairly cheap and efficient, but this doesn't make other builds unviable. You just need to manage your expectations against reality. Now, there are a few exceptions to this in that if your character just won't function without mega investment, meaning you can't even comfortably clear white and yellow maps, it's probably not viable. And at this point, you would say, I maybe need to look for another build. And then the last thing is that people say you have to play for hours a day to get anywhere in the game. Now, obviously, the more you play, in theory, the more you'll progress. But playing efficiently and knowing what you're doing beats out just playing for a long time. What I mean by this is that there does come a point where playing for too long is very detrimental. As the longer you play, the less likely you are to be actually playing the game efficiently. And more importantly, you're super likely to get bored and frustrated. 
For example, if I'm pumped and motivated to play like at League Start, I can get through the campaign in five hours, or I can farm loads and loads of maps in an hour. If, however, I'm almost just logging in for the sake of it, I might take eight hours to slog my way through the campaign and hate every minute of it, or when I'm mapping, I might only do four to five maps an hour, as I spend most of my time in my hideout, admiring my stash tabs, watching YouTube or TikTok videos, or just really regretting picking this particular build because it's not much fun. If you're a busy person with lots of real life stuff going on, you can still progress and do most of the content in the game. You just have to make sure that if you have two hours to play in a day or every two days, that you actually spend it playing the game. If you're mapping, you just map for two hours. Now there are things like mirror tier builds and mage bloods that are honestly out of reach to a lot of players, purely due to the time constraints of getting the currency to get these things together. But they're not things that you need to complete any content in the game, they just make it easier and much more fun. Don't compare how you're doing to how a streamer who plays 10 hours a day is doing. You can't do what they're doing purely because of the fact that they might put in 10 times the game time that you do. So with your checklist in hand, let's look at how to pick your build. Now the video is not going to cover making your own builds, it's going to focus on the different platforms available for you to pick a build and what to look out for when making a decision. So let's start with YouTube. This is probably the number one place people go to for a build and anyone who's played this game before will know that hundreds of videos come out at launch or just before promoting their league start build or best ever league starter. Now a lot of these are obviously really good and equally a lot of them are trash. We're now going to go over what I think you should look for for a league start guide on YouTube. I'm not going to go over it in too much detail because we've got lots to cover in the video. But I'm essentially looking for three things on a league start build. Once I've picked all the things that matter to me like fun, cost, efficiency, things like that. Firstly, I want to see an end game version that doesn't cost a moon. And I want to see a POB and details of the gear that are required to put it together. And I want an explanation of it in the video, which you can see here at timestamped is a gear in section. Timestamps is also something I think is really important for a league start guide on YouTube, mainly because they can be 30, 40, sometimes even 50 minute videos, which if you digest in one go, you get some understanding of the build, but you might want to go and check the leveling section again, or you might want to go and just check the mechanics of the skill. And without a timestamp, it makes it super difficult to do that. So once I've seen the, the build in action and it looks like something I want to play, I'm essentially just looking for two more things. Firstly, I want to see how to level the build, which again is timestamp at 2052. I want to see what it involves. Does it involve a skill that I really don't want to use for six or seven hours? Does it explain, you know, when to gem swap, what skills to use and how to progress? And then finally, I want to see progression from there to end game. And this is the part for me that's most important and the part that is often missing from some videos. There'll be a really detailed explanation about how to level through the campaign a really good concise explanation about how the skill works at end game and what gear you want, but there's nothing to show you how to transition to that point and it can get a lot of players lost. Um, so things like these are really helpful and a good indication that the build guide is something that's not only been thought out, but also actually been practiced. So they've gone through early, mid and end game. So these three POBs here are super helpful. Um, so if you can see that on a video or you download the POB and there's lots of different sections to show you how to level at different stages and what gear to look for these things i find super helpful for a league starter and it's a promising sign that this is a build that will work and has been fully tested so once you've picked your league start guide and you're happy with the video i think it's worth checking out other content that that creator has done the league before so did they do a league start build the league before and how did it go down and the comment section of youtube are a good way to understand that now obviously this can be manipulated it could be that there's 50 bad comments and they all get deleted um, but for the majority of creators, they'll just leave all their comments up. Now, the issue you might have is if we go to my league start guide, we'll do a bit of self-promotion. If we go to my league start guide for Reign of Arrows, we'll have a look at the comments. And it can be difficult to understand from the league start guide the season before whether this was a successful league start or not. Because most of the comments on there are going to be from before the league started. Um, so this guide, for example, would have come out probably a week before the league started. So most of the comments on here are going to be I really want to try this build. It looks really good. Lots of positive comments, but it doesn't necessarily mean the build worked. So the first thing I'll do is just go to sort by newest and just see what's on there. Um, so for this video in particular, nearly all of them are before the league started. Um, so we've got, is this hardcore viable? I'll try this one too. I'm torn between builds. I'll play along. So these all look like comments made before the league started. So what I think is worthwhile doing is just going in and seeing 
in a previous league start guide whether they brought out a follow-up video and if they did what are the comments on that because that is probably where you're going to find comments that either say yes this was great or no it was bait it did this and that that i didn't like um, so we'll just go into my second update so this although i don't normally do this sort of title my best ever league start it was without doubt the most fun build i've done at league start and it worked to a t how i wanted it to so if we go again and we just go into comments, these are more likely to be people who have already started the build. Um, so things like had a blast league starting with it. Uh, we keep going down. Build is wicked. Can't wait to try it. Never had such a smooth leveling. Things like that are obviously super, super positive signs that the previous work that the content creators brought out has worked, hasn't been bait, and people have tried it and have had a great success doing it. Now, there's always going to be negative comments. Um, they don't necessarily mean that they're bad. It might be they just don't like this sort of build. I did have a few comments where people were saying, yeah, I just hate playing bows. I feel too squishy sometimes. Uh, I can't do this. I can't do that. There's, it's not going to suit everyone and builds aren't. But as long as the majority of the comments are positive, I think you can be confident that the creator that you're picking the league star with is actually putting out a decent guide. And if you follow it and you actually do what the content creator says, you're going to have a good time. The next place a lot of people will look to find builds is periobuilds.cc. Do not get this confused with the awful period builds channel on YouTube that's all monetized. This pulls builds directly from the official POE forum. It's a really good way of finding builds and it's a really good way of showing uh, what builds are popular and what builds people are using. I used to have my Vile Lightning Strike build on POE builds, but the way you have to create the guides is so archaic. It takes a long time. It's easy to make mistakes and it's a pain in the ass to change them. So yes, if someone like Enki, for example, his guide is really, really up to date. He amends it all the time. It's a build. There's a reason it's top. It's a very, very detailed guide. But a lot of them maybe aren't as detailed because they are very, very difficult to change, which means builds that might have been on there for four or five leagues may not have the sufficient changes when patch notes come around. Another really good one that's sprung up over the past few leagues is Max Roll. This was normally something... Uh, dedicated to other games particularly things like diablo 3 now it's got a path of exile section with lots of the big streamers contributing um, to getting guides out there's guides for various different things as well as builds uh, but uh, they are really really good and well put together guides you just have to make sure that when you're picking a guide that you go through it and, and it is a guide that you want to use at league star because this covers a variety of different builds this website so you have league starter builds you have end game builds you'll have budget builds so make sure when you're picking a build that you pick the type you want with League Starter and um, want to be a mapper and then see what comes up when it filters it through. Now the last one I'm going to talk about in detail is Path of Exile Builds Reddit. This isn't POE Reddit. This is a separate Reddit for just builds and I found this really, really helpful. There's a lot of very, very good people on here that will help you if you need help with a build or if you're looking for a particular build, they will direct you um, to certain builds that you can play. There'll be a starter index here. So when 321 rolls around, they'll have contributors that have builds and most of these will be really, really good. So I didn't put my build into here, but partway through the thread, someone said, I've seen this build, it looks really good and it got added to the list and, and that's the way it happens. So you can go onto this thread and have a look at some really good builds. A lot of them will be on YouTube or Max Roll. So it might be just relaying you to areas I've already covered in this video. But it's a good way of just going skill by skill to see what build you might want to play. So the last two we're going to cover off is POE Ninja and Twitch. But we're going to do them in one. The reason being is that they sort of combine with each other when you're talking about builds. So I'm going to show you how I use POE Ninja. Because this tool can be absolutely terrible for ruining both your league start and your build. The reason being is that if we go into week 10 for example. Which is way 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 into the league. Because of how easy it is to get to level 100 now. You have no idea how these people got there, if their build got them there, or if their build is even any good. So if we untick Toxic Rain, you'll see a ton of skills, and it will be the general meta skills, Tornado Shot, um, Righteous Fire, Spark. Doesn't mean these builds are good though. Yes, these skills can be built amazingly, and they can work really, really well. But just because someone's level 100 does not mean their build is good. RMT is rife in this game, and there are lots of people that will just pay at their own pocket to get to 100, they'll buy gear, and they'll put a shit build together. They'll probably give up after a week, but they're now on that POE Ninja snapshot. So the way I would use it is probably look at day three snapshots. So even here, you can see there are already lots of level 100s on day three, but it's unlikely they got carried there because carries aren't really set up at this stage. 
these people all probably genuinely got to at least 98 or 99 and maybe they, they paid the rest of the way but all these builds should be fairly decent now it doesn't mean they're cheap this could be still at this stage of the league 50 to 60 divines worth of currency but it gives you an idea of what people league start with and what they're playing with so you could then go through and pick the skills you want personally i'll probably go down to day two i want to see people at you know 90 to 100 i don't really want this level 100s because i'm not going to be that person um, so what you could do is go in have a look at the snapshot see what people are playing i decide right i'd actually like to play uh, a bone shatter build so i'm going to click on that and then it's going to give me all the bone shatter builds and i can just go and have a look you can import these um, into pob or you can just click on the character and have a look um, what sort of gear they had at this stage of the league what their tree looked like uh, whether there any jewels specifically that they've got that you might need it's just a really good way to look at builds what it also gives you is a link to streamers that play and it will give you a link to their build as well again you can just import this build direct into pob um, so let's say you found a streamer that you wanted um, to watch and you liked the look of the build you can click on that particular character and you can have a look at the character or you can click on the streamer and link direct to the stream and then this is a really really good way to have a look at a league start and have a look at how the league start build operates you can then follow that person on twitch and then you can keep dropping by have a look at previous vods obviously sub if you like the content and this is another good way for you to actually get a first-hand view of what the build is like now not everyone practices their league start builds but a lot of the big streamers do and it's something worth keeping an eye on if you want to maybe try something different so I'm not going to spend too long talking about something that is probably what all you guys are shouting at me to say patch notes, patch notes, patch notes. Patch notes are very important to whether a league start build is going to be viable. However, if you follow a good content creator and someone who league after league brings out good content, they will have you covered for patch notes. Now, there may be odd things that I may be unsure of because the wording is really vague or it's not quite clear how it's going to work. So there are going to be some gray areas. So I would always recommend you read the patch notes just to make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. The reason I'm saying not to get into it too much is patch notes are very, very difficult to understand how they're going to affect the build if it's not a build you're familiar with. I'm just really going to quickly run through an example. Vile Lightning Strike in 315 and onwards was an absolutely amazing build. 320 was where they drew the line and said, right, we're going to nerf the skill. But not only did they nerf the skill, they nerfed a support skill that was used with it and they used another skill that was also used. If you weren't aware of the build, you'd probably just go onto Lightning Strike, read these patch notes and go, oh, yeah, it lost a little bit of damage and it lost 66% of its projectiles. So it doesn't look like it's great, but with a Helm Enchant, I can get up to four, five, six projectiles. This skill will still work okay. For anyone that knows the Lightning Strike build, the biggest nerf was Withering Step and Elusive. Elusive is a buff where you hit an enemy, you get Elusive and it ticks down. The more it ticks down, the less effect Elusive has. Withering Step essentially reset it, so it meant that you always had pretty much 80 plus percent Elusive. They've totally removed that, which basically half the effectiveness of Elusive, which means you get hit more, you take more damage and you do less damage. There was other things that affected Lightning Strike as well, but overall, it was just a big package of things that made the skill much worse. Yes, it was still a viable build, but in the very format of that attack-based build, it was no longer a good league start, and I dropped it from my league start guide. Now, the reason I'm saying not to worry about it too much is because there are lots of things that affect the build. This was just a skill and a support skill. It might have been that one of the uniques that was used with the build now means the build just doesn't work whatsoever. So let's say you had an ignite build and there was a piece of armor that gave you 1000% more ignite damage and it was an error but they didn't fix it in that league they fixed it in the league after and they toned it down to 100%. You're thinking you're going to do an ignite fireball build you go on you put fireball you put ignite nothing's affected by any of those great your league starter is going to be kicking because you've got this amazing unique chest. You're going to have to check the chest as well you're going to have to check gems you're going to have to check masteries you're going to have to check skill trees. It's not as simple anymore checking patch notes to see how your build is going to perform. If you're not sure, get on the forums, get on the POE builds forums, get on the official forums and just ask. I want to play this build. How badly affected is it by patch notes? And someone who knows their stuff is going to come and answer your question. Yes, you might have to deal with a couple of jerks in the meantime, but overall, someone is going to give you the answer of no, it's still viable, but it's going to be worse. Uh, no, it's absolutely terrible or the changes won't make a difference whatsoever. 
So yes, pay attention to patch notes, but don't feel bad if you just don't understand them because they are getting more and more complex and more and more vague as the leagues go on. So now we're just going to go through a few extra categories that come up when I'm asked about League Star. The first, which I get asked quite a lot, is should I practice a build for League Start and how much? And it's really dependent on you. I practice my builds for League Start, but that's only because I want to put a guide out for these builds. And I wouldn't really be confident doing it if I hadn't tested it all the way through because I don't want the backlash of, oh dear, I've made a massive mistake here. Uh, this build doesn't actually transition to endgame and everyone's going to have a horrible League Start. That's the only reason I practice my League Start builds is because I'm going to put a video out. If I was to follow someone else's league start guide and I've done the steps I've already gone through in this video, I would not practice it. I would just jump in at league start. One reason you might want to practice is if you just want to speed up. Like there is no reason you can't do a 30 to 40 minute act one. It's an easy act to do. You don't have to stop. Even if you pick up no gear, you can get through in 30 to 40 minutes. So if you're someone that takes an hour or an hour and 10 minutes to do act one, then it might be worth practicing just to be a bit more efficient at those parts of the game because they are the parts that are super, super boring. But remember, you're going to be doing this at league start, so don't force yourself through it if you don't want to because a couple of weeks later, you're going to be doing it for real and it might negatively affect the experience that you have within the game. Next section I want to cover is what happens if you follow a dud and you brick your league start. A lot of people panic and just either try and force their way through it, assuming the guide will get them there eventually, or they quit, or they restart another character, but there is someone who takes 10 to 12 hours to get through the campaign, and then they're not in maps for like two weeks, and they just give up because they're just fed up of the experience. There are very few builds you can follow that will 100% brick your league start. And if you are following one of these builds, you will notice it way, way, way before you get through the campaign. So if you've followed a league start guide and it's got you through the campaign, but it feels rubbish and you can't really clear maps, there are things that you could do. First thing, what class are you playing? Go on to Peary Ninja, put in your class and see what builds people are playing. Go on to Twitch, go on to YouTube and see what people are doing. You will be able to respect into another build, probably for no currency whatsoever, to at least be able to start mapping and get some currency. Yes, it is a bit annoying to have to change builds halfway through your league start, but there's no point banging your head against the brick wall with a build that is just not going to work. Farm up a few regrets, Look at what you need to do to respect your tree and do so. What I'd recommend is if your build was a spell build, look for a similar spell build because it should be less respects. Alternatively, if yours is like an attack based build, look for another attack build because again, it's going to be less respects. You don't want to have to save up enough regrets to respect your entire tree, but maybe find a build that works that is just 20 to 30 respect points. It is certainly going to be quicker than grinding your way through the entire campaign again and who knows the next league start you pick might also be a dud so do not panic it is annoying and very frustrating but it's not the end of the world and i can't think of many builds that would completely brick a league start and then the last thing i want to cover off in this kind of tip section is should you start another build if you're really not enjoying your league start build and again this is down to personal preference and whereabouts you are within the game if you are going through the campaign and you are leveling with a different skill that's not going to be your end game skill then you kind of just have to grin and bear it when i played my lightning strike build for example i leveled with spectral helix and i absolutely hated it however it got me through the campaign an hour quicker than any other skill so it's something i would put up with until i could get my build online if you've already switched to what your end game build is going to be and you're absolutely hating it you might consider respecking but what you need to consider in Path of Exile is nearly all builds feel pretty crappy in the first few days, especially when you haven't got Uber Lab. Even once you get Uber Lab and you get to that stage where you've got to force your way through those corrupted red maps, unless your build is amazing, you are going to struggle at those and they're going to feel shit. And that's the kind of hill that you've got to get over to be able to push through and do better. So no, I would never ever abandon a league start because you're not enjoying it unless you fundamentally know that the playstyle is not for you. So let's say you decide to try Righteous Fire and you just do not like the playstyle. That's probably not going to change. Yes, the build will get quicker. Yes, you'll kill stuff quicker and become more tanky. But the overall Righteous Fire as a skill is never going to change. Same as if you were to go, I'm going to go and do a Tornado Shot build or a Rain of Arrows build. And then halfway through, like, I hate this Archer playstyle. I'm really not liking Deadeye. Then you might need to think about respecking. But 
are you hating it that much that you can't get through and get your void stones? Really, really think about whether you want to restart. And I honestly would only restart a League Starter build if I couldn't continue with the character because it was terrible. If I didn't enjoy it, I would just say, look, this is the build I've picked. I'm already two days into it. I've done the campaign. I'm just going to grin and bear it. As soon as I've got 10, 15 divines saved up, I'm going to start another character, whiz through the campaign, and then we'll go again. What I'm going to talk about now is currency making. I put out a budget build guide, which I would call budget, for Tornado Shot, well past the halfway stage of the league. I said, here's a budget Tornado Shot build, works really well, 10 to 15 divines. And I had three or four comments like, 10 to 15 divines, lol, budget, I don't make one divine a league and I play four hours a day, stuff like that. They could have been trolls. But some people do think that just playing the game makes you currency, and this isn't true. Yes, it does to an extent in that the more you play, the more currency you're going to make. But if you're not targeting specific Lee mechanics, or you're not doing T14 maps and altars, and you're not getting invitations, where's your money coming from outside Lucky Drops? And it really isn't. But you do not need to play 8 to 10 hours a day on League Start every day to make money. To give an example for me, I live in the UK. So League Start is either 9 o'clock at night, seven o'clock at night or it sometimes falls in between at 8 p.m i'm 43 years old i'm not staying up for 24 hours gaming my ass off to get to maps i want to be able to actually feel awake and feel good and rested and enjoy my playtime. so without fail and i always stream at league start i'll pretty much get to blood aqueducts and then i go to bed i get eight hours sleep i wake up have my breakfast have some family time probably get back on the computer in midday get to maps maybe three in the afternoon so I'm coming up to now 20 odd hours probably after league start and I'm just hitting maps. Someone in America who maybe takes 12 hours to get through the campaign but they started at 9 in the morning is going to be ahead of me and I don't care and it doesn't make a difference. I can make money at any point in the game and it's not difficult to do so and as I say the next video is going to show that. Do not be put off if a streamer is getting through yellow maps and you're just getting through act 7. It really doesn't matter how slow it takes you to get through it. It's more about once you get to maps, are you doing the right things to make the little bit of currency that you need to push your build further? And as I say, there will be another video um, coming out to show that. So what are my plans for 321? I may as well cover this off at the end of the video. I'm on holiday for League Start. I'm away four to five days before the launch and four to five days after the start. I'm actually looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing what it's like. League starting very late. And I want to dispel all these myths about you have to get to maps in two to three days. You have to do this. You have to do that because you don't. And I'm really looking forward to bringing out some videos to show how to make currency if you're a bit late to the party, which is why I want to bring out a video about how to farm yellow maps, because this is probably going to form part of my strategy. I am going to be in no rush whatsoever to get any void stones because I'm starting so late. What I would rather do is farm yellow maps, get a ton of currency together, buy all the stuff I need for my build and blitz through all of the end game. So there will be a video coming out before I go away of how I plan to do that and what mechanics I plan to utilize as long as I get some idea of what the Atlas Tree is going to be like before I jet off. And then once I return, I'll obviously league start. And as usual, there's going to be daily updates and I will try and stream as much as I can for the first few days. Whether anyone wants to watch someone league start five to six days late, who knows? The other idea I had, which I don't think is going to happen because I absolutely hate it, is I could league start on console because then I can actually get in with league start but i really do not enjoy this game on console that's enough waffling from me thank you very much for watching take care and see you in the next one